ambulatory surgical facilities. They have been so crucial in their ability to take patients and those cases out of hospitals that have been overrun. So this body approved Senate Bill 818, had broad bipartisan support to permit surgical procedures on the federal CMS covered procedures list to be performed by these centers without the need for a waiver from your department to do so. As you know, uh, currently ambulatory surgical facilities have to submit a request every time they need to offer one of the procedures not currently outlined in the state's, we, we have to admit, very outdated hospital regulations. So the disparities in the decision making, they have been astronomical and completely arbitrary in my opinion. Can you share with me who is responsible for reviewing and determining the outcome of these requests and what clinical or medical background does that individual have? Well, I would strongly disagree that the decisions made are arbitrary and as the acting secretary, I think I have more authority on the subject of whether someone is qualified to make those decisions. All of our staff who work in our that quality individual, assurance deputies is that have backgrounds individual in a nursing. medical professional? Yes. Um, and what are their qualifications or, or their, their, their credentials? Most of them have a background in nursing. So you are saying that they um, have the same type of medical credentials as the individual who makes that decision for uh, the list that uh, federal CMS uses? Yes. They have the exact same credentials. I can't speak to every single individual, but most of our, if not all of our QA surveyors have a background in nursing, and I certainly can't speak to the qualifications of individuals at CMS, but they do have clinical training. Background in nursing and clinical training. Well, I look, I have to tell you that um, acute care needs um, are significant. These entities really bailed us out because when you couldn't get any of these diagnostic procedures done in a hospital because they were overrun with COVID, they are this, these are the facilities that have really taken on that burden of care. And again, I, I will say to you, um, Senate Bill 818 is essential so that we don't see uh, these arbitrary decisions being made. Thank you. Um, if, if I may, um, question with regard to the testimony that was presented yesterday um, at this hearing. We heard from the Department of Human Services regarding an issue that we're hearing about from our children's pediatricians, child care providers statewide, and according to the Office of Child Development and Early Learning, a year and a half went by before they became aware of a regulation that has been linked to Department of Health's list of reportable and communicable diseases. So through the testimony yesterday, we learned that at some point in the last two years, the Department of Health put COVID-19 on a communicable disease list, or, or rather its list on its website. And are you aware that COVID-19 is on the Department of Health's communicable disease list? Yes. When was it added to that list? January 2020. January of 2020. Who added it to the list? Our epidemiology team. Okay. So Octel or the Department of Human Services testified yesterday that Octel did not become aware of it being added to the list until December of 2021. So I'm having a hard time believing why something that significant uh, would not have been made known to a, a sister agency. Can you explain that? Sorry, after this, we'll have to follow up um, between the Department of Health and your office um, on this questioning outside of the hearing, if possible. All right, if you want to answer this question, then we'll move on, please. Sure. Thanks, Senator Brown. Um, I can't speak to, I don't have firsthand knowledge of um, what happened within DHS. We do post the list of communicable diseases on our website. We also send out a HON, which is a health action alert. Um, and we did that uh, at the time that we added um, COVID to the communicable disease list. 
Thank you very much, Acting Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.